In this third video in my series on the Kim 1 computer, we'll look at memory expansion and run some programs that require more than the Kim's built-in 1K of RAM. If you haven't already done so, you should first watch parts 1 and 2 of this video series. They cover the history and basic features of the Kim 1, use of the cassette and serial interfaces, and running some small example programs. I mentioned in the last video that I'd noticed that some memory locations in my Kim 1 could not be correctly written to. The relevant memory was about 25 addresses near the top of the 1K block of RAM, and for these locations, data bit 0 could not be written as high. The memory test program from the first book of Kim confirmed this. Since each bit is handled by a separate RAM chip, that pointed to one particular chip, U14, as being bad. Fortunately, not all locations in the chip were bad, otherwise the Kim 1 would have no fully functional memory in the first 1K and not operate at all. The RAM chips are 1K by 1 bit 6102 parts made by Moss Technology, the same company as the 6502 processor and the Kim 1. These are equivalent to the 2102 and 2021 RAM chips that were made by several vendors. They're long obsolete today, but a search on eBay found several vendors selling new old stock parts. I purchased a Fairchild 21021 chip from a seller in Romania for $1.80 US plus shipping. It took a few weeks to arrive. I carefully unsoldered the old RAM chip. I then installed an IC socket in case there were problems with the new chip. The printed circuit board can be easily damaged after repetitive soldering and unsoldering. After putting in the new chip, I was happy to find that the memory now worked perfectly. Earlier I debated whether to leave the board original as it is somewhat historic, or to repair it and make it functional. I decided it was only logical to fix the board and make it fully functional, even though it wouldn't be totally original. While the part is not original, it is from the same era with a date code of 1978. One of the programs I wasn't able to run until the RAM in the Kim 1 was fixed was MicroChess. MicroChess for the Kim 1, written by Peter Jennings, was the first game program sold for home computers. It was introduced in 1976 and sold for $10. For that, you got a printed manual, which included instructions, a source code listing, and a hexadecimal binary listing that you had to type in, unless you bought the version on cassette tape for an additional $5. MicroChess was the first software package to sell 50,000 copies. Later, versions were developed for other computer platforms like Apple, Tandy Radio Shack, Commodore, and Ohio Scientific, and several million copies were sold. The Kim 1 version amazingly fits in the available 1K of memory, including the 128 bytes of RAM in the Riot chips. It plays a fair game of chess, including a book of 10 different openings, only one of which can be loaded at a time. It uses the seven segment displays and keyboard of the Kim 1, so you generally need to play alongside a real chess board. It has several difficulty levels, with the default hardest level taking an average of 100 seconds to ponder each move. Here I'm playing a game with the Kim 1. Moves are indicated using numbers on the display to denote the rank and file positions of the pieces to be moved. I took the source code from the original MicroChess manual and ported it so that it compiles with the CC65 assembler, including the different openings. Given more memory, such as on my machine, one could easily extend the program to play a better game and have an improved user interface using the serial console. And in fact, a number of people have done this. And I see the Kim1 has now determined its next move. One K of RAM is very limiting. Many people back in the day expanded their systems with commercial or homebrew memory boards. 4K or 8K was typical, and designs were published in user group newsletters, magazines, and books. The Kim 1 manual included some information on expanding memory, and Commodore offered official memory expansion boards. The typical memory chips used at the time were 2114 4K by 4-bit static RAM. In order to run larger programs, I looked for any existing commercial solutions and found the products from Corsham Technologies. I demonstrated their I.O. board in the last video. 
They sell a 4K memory expansion board for the Kim One, which expands the system to a total of 5K of contiguous RAM. For only a little more cost, they also sell a monster 60K RAM board, and I opted to buy this one. It expands the Kim One to the maximum possible amount of memory it can address, and banks of memory can be enabled in 8K blocks. It does this with a single RAM chip, in fact, a 128 kilobyte device of which only half is used. It plugs into the upper expansion connector on the Kim One and also connects via a small ribbon cable to the I.O. expansion board as it needs to pick up some address select signals from the lower application connector. With more memory, my Kim One can now run larger programs. Let's look at a few. Two K S A was a symbolic assembler written in 1979 by Robert Ford Dennison. It was primarily written for Kim One systems, but also ran on the similar AIM and SIM machines. It's a somewhat primitive assembler by today's standards, but amazingly, it's only about two kilobytes in size, written in assembler, allowing it to run resident on very small systems like the Kim One. It's also well documented and mostly portable. It's able to assemble itself. The program was written by the same Robert Ford Dennison who gave me this Kim One system, which previously belonged to him. It's a real kick to run this software on the same machine that belonged to the author who wrote it 36 years ago. At the time it was written, he had a 3 kilobyte memory expansion, a homebrew interface to a parallel typewriter style keyboard, and used the Kim One display for output with a custom output driver. Here's the assembler running some example code through the serial console running on a terminal emulator on a Linux laptop. I entered the source code from the original manual and ported it to the CC65 cross assembler so I can build it from source and download the paper tape file. Tiny Basic is a dialect of the basic programming language written by Tom Pittman which was sold for five dollars a copy. Developed primarily for the Kim One, it was easily ported to other 6502 based computers. It's a little more primitive than most common and larger variants of BASIC, lacking even four next loops. It's also quite slow because it's implemented using an interpreted language, so it's an interpreter written in an interpreter written in machine language. Tiny Basic spawned a newsletter called Dr. Dobbs Journal of Tiny Basic Calisthenics and Orthodontia which evolved into the Dr. Dobbs Journal, which was published until the year 2014. Bill O'Neill disassembled a 6502 version of Tiny Basic, added comments, and got it working with generic 6502 systems using a serial ACIA for input and output. I took his source code, adapted it to the CC65 cross-assembler, and put back in the original Kim One input-output routines. It's about 2.3 kilobytes in size, so it won't run on a stock Kim One. Here's an example of running a small demonstration program. As part of my work on the Brielle Replica 1 computer, I wrote quite an extensive 6502 machine language monitor program I called JMON. I eventually implemented just about every feature I could think of, including 6502 assembly and disassembly, and support for other 6502 CPUs like the 65CO2. I later ported it to the Brielle Superboard 3, a replica of the Ohio Scientific Superboard 2. As the program is mostly portable to any 6502 system, I also ported it to the Kim One. It's a little over 8K in size, so I had to wait until I had the memory expansion. It uses the serial console. Porting was quite simple. The largest part of the task was actually adding support for lowercase characters, as the other two machines it ran on all normally used all uppercase characters. I also modified it to support a larger screen. Porting to the Superboard 3 had involved making it work on a screen only 24 characters wide. Serial I.O. in the Kim One is a little unusual as there's no hardware UART, 
The serial code is implemented in software using one of the PIA chips. That has some implications such as no buffering of characters and only being able to support relatively slow baud rates. But the work is all done by the built-in firmware and overall it works quite well. Here's Jmon running on the Kim1 through a serial console. It implements a little over 20 different commands to do things ranging from dumping and editing memory, disassembly, copying, filling memory, changing CPU registers, setting breakpoints and executing single stepping, and even a simple one line at a time assembler. As well as for education and games, many users of the Kim1, including the previous owner of this system, use them for scientific computing that we would today consider an embedded system. Books such as this one covered many real-time and embedded programming concepts and used the Kim1 as the hardware platform. The expansion connectors and onboard PIAs allowed the Kim1 to be connected to various types of peripheral devices. I've now covered pretty much all I can say about the Kim 1. While there are some more experiments I'd like to perform with it, I also have some other projects planned that I want to tackle, so I'll probably set it aside for a while. If you have any questions on this or other videos, please contact me or post comments below and I'll try to respond to them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please check out my other videos on vintage computers and electronics.